But I think that it's important to train with a high intensity to make the training look like the games. And if you would think that more than four games in the week would be good, then I am not agree with you. So I think that we're training hard enough here. The Danish culture says that you don't have to be so afraid uh, making the players like you. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not so afraid to, if we are out seeing an opponent in uh, one or two hours from Skanderborg, we're going out to dinner with them and talk in uh, other ways, other things in life to them and try to teach them how, how the world is outside this hall, handball hall and mm-hmm. outside this little sheer world. We have to stay near to them and that's the, yeah, I think that's a good Danish way. Hey Mikkel. Hello. Who are you Mikkel? I'm a handball coach who is living in Skanderborg, Denmark, and I'm coaching youth players. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of all, I'm coach for youth players, which are boys, and I'm also coaches a little at the girls' teams. Mm-hmm. Then I'm uh, the mm, the sports leader of Shea, which is our academy in Skanderborg. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are we right now in Skanderborg? And we are in Skanderborg Fellow in the restaurant. <laughs> and we are uh, here just an hour before training mm-hmm. to talk a little about uh, the Shea Academy mm-hmm. and the de- development of the talents here. How big is the Shea and what is included in Shea? What does it mean? Is it school or handball? Is it just handball? What is Shea? Shea is a kind of uh, a kind of in a thing between the league team, women and men, and the youth club Skanderbo Honbold. Mm-hmm. So Shea is the uh, talent development platform uh, as we build for helping young players, uh, what do you call, it, realize their dreams. Mm-hmm. When does a talent comes to Shea, so what are the beginning age of a uh, player when it comes to Shea? Yeah, the typical age are you uh, 15 or 16 mm-hmm. and we have under 17 teams and under 19 teams. Mm-hmm. And then you go up to either hopefully our first team in the women or men's league mm-hmm. or to one of our uh, new farmer clubs. We try to make a good uh, relationship to some clubs around us Mm -hmm. for helping our young players to the next level. Mm -hmm. So the player which is uh, applied or get the get the invitation for Mm. Shea is uh, going to the U17. Mm. Okay and then they stay here for four years. Yeah three or four years. Yeah yeah. three or four years. Okay. Um, They all go they all go in one school together or is there different schools working with yeah. you. Yeah, you can say Shea is 75 players where 44 of them are living at our academy, mm-hmm. Villa Shea, as it is called, mm-hmm. and uh, the rest, the 30 rest, they are living maybe around the city or in, uh, what do you call it, in an area so they can drive to training with their parents or with themselves. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, we have the schools here, business schools and normal gymnasium school, where 80% of all our players are studying yeah, every day yeah, in three years here. Mm-hmm. And how is the connection or how is the work with the school? Is there morning practice here or is there, how is, how is that no, going? Uh, normally we have some physical morning practice, but we don't uh, practice with ball in the morning because uh, they all have uh, what to call uh, different schedules mm-hmm. so it's only possible to make the physical part some mornings here yeah mm-hmm. okay so how often is a typical practice week. how often do they practice in a week yeah the every team at us are trained in our practicing four times with the handball mm-hmm. monday tuesday thursday and friday and then all are making uh, hmm, physical training mm-hmm. 
Monday after or before in the morning, the handball, Wednesday afternoon, and one time in the weekend. And two out of three times with physical training are together with our physical trainer, which are uh, from athletics track and field trainers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like their philosophy too, mobility and movement. Yeah, so we always have track and field trainers. Okay, is there any intention to increase the number of practices here? When you say because you don't practice in the morning because there are different schedules, maybe the next step could be that you work with the school together, make the same schedules and make a free block Tuesday in the morning. Is there any wish for that? No, not, mo not more handball than four times. That's enough, we think. Mm -hmm. And every team in Denmark, also in the league, are only training four times in the week. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it could be uh, our dream to have some more serious physical training if we could put in, the, in their school schedule so they can train a little more there. Mm -hmm. It could be good for developing their physical skills. Is there any reason that uh, teams in Denmark only practice four times with handball? Hmm, no, I don't know. But I think that it's important to train with high intensity to make the training looks like the games. And if you would uh, think that more than four games in the week would be good, then I'm not agree with you. So I think that we're training hard enough here, but it could be good so for some more space to the physical training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the, How is the selection for the U17 ongoing? So hmm. I could imagine that you have a U15. Yeah. So a lot of players from the U15 try to go in the U17, but there are also, I could imagine, a lot of players from the outside who wants to go to share. Yeah. First of all, we uh, we take a look at our own under under 15 players mm -hmm. and uh, try to look out which of them could do it. Mm -hmm. Where have we some potential? Maybe some physical potentials. Maybe some mental potential. Some good movements, uh, special skills, a good arm, something like that, defense skills, something that we can see, ah, there, here is a potential to make it grow. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to make and develop senior elite players. That's our upper side goal. And the way to that is uh, development, physical, mentally, technical and tactical. Mm -hmm. So the potential could be everywhere like that. And uh, we take a group from our own under 15 mm -hmm. and then we take a look around us in the area and the country and of course we have many players who is right uh, who is writing uh, to us for what do you call it uh, apply yeah Page. for apply yeah uh, into the academy and then we have to answer maybe they come here to have a training or two with us and then we say oh yes it could be a good idea yeah for you to come here mm -hmm. and if they, if you, if, if, if you grab a talent from the outside, then they stay here for three or four years. What happens maybe in the most uh, worst way, the player don't develop well, or maybe make some, I don't know, mentally not fit enough for all these programs here. Could there, is there any, I don't know, from the U17 to the U19, is there another selection? No, actually we try to look very good at them in the first time. We have to look at them, and talk to them and make a kind of a relationship to them. So we know how are they, how do they think, what are their dreams and uh, how can we do this for the long time as possible. So uh, actually we try to say, okay, if we take you in in our academy, we have to trust that you could make it. And if you're a little slow starter and you're not so good in under 17 and you're not training so well, so we have to learn you to be better and train better. Because we have to make a dual career between school and handball. And if we kick them out because of handball, they have to move into another school or maybe they will break down and <laughs> doesn't make it well into school. So, so we try to help people against it. And that's why we are... Um, very grundy, we are very specific about the, the players we will choose to this project and academy. This is an awesome question, uh, this is an awesome way and I got a lot of questions about it. Can you give us 
maybe three typical questions you ask a young talent or a young player in a in a, in a talk where you can see okay what is so, so one one question could be what is your vision or what do you like most yeah. about handball so that's always a vision hmm. some of them knows and some of them don't know but i'm very into i'm very interested in, in when i'm talking to them I need them to talk, not their parents or their friends, and we need them to say something to us, and they have to show that they are ready for this, because it is tough. And I always ask them, what what do you do when it's getting tough, and it's getting serious, and it's raining and storming outside, and you have to run 10 kilometers, and then you have to play a match the day after, and you, you would not enter the, bay, in, enter the court. Mm -hmm. What would you think, Dad? What about... And then we talk a lot to the parents about that this is a place where we will get, how do you call it, must and you will get uh, troubles here. Mm -hmm. It would be hard for you and for your kid and it would be some very tough shit and sometimes it go up and sometimes it go down. That's just like business. So um, we have to prepare them that everything is not just winning and getting into national team. Some of it is very, very hard work for a long time. Also very interesting. What did you think is a talent? When you see a U15 player, hmm. what could you imagine are there, what is the most important thing you'd like to see in a talent in this year? Personally, I really like players who are fighting. Hmm. That's the big, big talent for me. I'm very... Um, interested to, uh, to have uh, players with some fire in their eyes and they are into winning. That's my uh, aufgabe, to, uh, to learn the players how to win. Not for every prize, of course not, but we are into winning and try to teach them how to win and how to fight and how to make it better than the team who is against us. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting skill for me. Mm -hmm. uh, are the players uh, Uh, jumping over a ball or are they uh, uh, fighting through the defense and into the goals or are they are they uh, uh, make it hard in defense that's very important to me mm. of course I'm also looking for players who have a very good arm and can shoot uh, around the body and from the top or mm. from the floor and I'm also looking for people who are very tall and and fit and that's uh, that's a part of it because it's necessary to have someone who are like that. Mm. But I'm also looking for fast, small players. I really like players who have uh, quick feet, who can uh, uh, collect two defenders and put the ball away to the next player. That's really my style. So I have mm. to have one or two or three players like that in every team here. Mm. So we play a little fast. And we also have to remember ourselves that If we have a team here with 12 or 14 players, not all of them will make it to the league's level. So we also have to think that five or six with the Liga or national team potential and five or six who are good fighters, good players, maybe tall players who are good, exciting projects. But we, we cannot only have players who are into national team because so it, it will never fit Because if everybody thinks that they are, uh, they are the star on the team, we cannot make real stars, do you understand? If mm -hmm. I have to, hmm, how do you call that, cut It's the hot. playing time mm -hmm. into everybody and the, and the team, the same size of playing time, we cannot make real leaders mm -hmm. who knows that now it's my turn. The, the score is 20-20, now it's me. And everybody should know, oh, okay, it's him now. <laughs> okay. Well, wow. um, okay, okay, I understand this. So it's a, but is there, you, um, there are a player from the outside and you invite him for one or two days. Is this a typical one or is there maybe an, an open practice for everyone? So like all the players who are applied here come together for one or two days. So how is the, the normal schedule for an... Uh the normal schedule are that players who reply here, mm. they are welcome to come here and talk to us and make one or two training with us. Mm. And after that, we can give them, yeah, an answer. How, are, how do you fit in here and how are the team looks like and 
sometimes we also have good players who are replied here and want to be here. But maybe we have two good players on the position and then we have to say no. Because we 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 will use every player we have. Mm -hmm. We don't want players only for the bench. Mm -hmm. So that's important for us to do, don't don't fill too much up. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a lot about trust. Yeah, it's a lot about trust. They can trust that if we say yes to them, yeah. we will help them in school and handball and we will use them at the core at the court. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will put them into games and we will development them if they want. Of course, sometimes we have a player who uh, who are not motivated anymore or are not doing the right things to the training in a long period. And when we have to talk about, hey, what's the problem? Uh, do you like to be here or do you still have this dream we talked about for two years ago or are your dreams in another direction now? Mm -hmm. And also for the trust you give them, um, Playtime, but also on the how can I say it? You talk about the the villa share, yeah, yeah, because it's for young people who are claim uh, who are stay far away from their parents. Um, it's a high uh, responsibility for you to develop them also beside handball and beside school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how is it maybe with with alcohol or maybe with smoking? Is there any allowed, or did you make here some? Uh, how can I say? You talk with them and you give them a lecture about it, so they know it's not best, it's not good for them. How did you work with someone who betrayed your trust? Mm. Of course, we uh, we're working with rules mm -hmm. in that direction. We uh, we talk to them about what to eat, mm -hmm. what to drink, and what not to eat and what not to drink for being an athlete and a handball player on the high level, this is a kind of education. Mm -hmm. And we try to teach them everything we know, and then they have to make their own impression of that. Uh, alcohol and smoking is totally forbidden here. Mm -hmm. If you smoke or drink alcohol, then you are out of the academy. Mm -hmm. We don't give extra chances in that direction. The culture is that, the culture is that None of our players are smoking or drinking. And then you think, ah, they are, but you don't know. I know, they don't smoke and they don't drink. And all the time they are here. In the holidays, in Christmas, New Year's Eve, summer times, cool. Mm -hmm. Just have fun. But in the season, and then you are here, especially when you are here, and also when we're doing the season with matches every week, mm -hmm. no alcohol, of course not, because it's not good for you. And we have to be serious here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said, a lot of trust is given here and in, in two directions. Let's go back to the hall. Let's go back to the to the sport. Hmm. What is your game philosophy, or what is your main, I don't know, development philosophy? What what kind of things are necessary to make the next step in the elite level or making the next step to the national team. So what, what, is, um, what is the main part of your practice maybe? The main part in our practice is of course individually training. Mm -hmm. We need to train them like single players in a collective way. In the Scandinavian style we are playing collective together. We have good relations, we are good in passing and in timing and that's important but a good individual player here is also a player who is good at timing and good at passing mm -hmm. so that's very important skills for us so it's about to make individual players who can play together so we're not only I often look at my cell phone and I look for Instagram and stuff like that and I see people who is jumping jumping rolling dribbling at part and then they're shooting and personally I don't think that that's the right way to develop men players. I actually hate that kind of training. So when we train individual moves or shooting we often do it like uh, two and two together uh, or against each other and we try to make one against uh, two and uh, yeah mm -hmm. you know stuff like that who looks a little more like handball 
not only move to this air body and move to this air body. And I don't believe in that because nobody is standing so still in the real world. So we have to do it like it's actually looks like handball. I, uh, the last days you give me a great example for it and I have a question about it, about the passing exercises. Hmm. What key facts need a good passing exercise for you? Yeah, for me personally, passing is one of the most important thing. My players are, if I, I hope they are good at passing and uh, When I train youth players, I try to make a lot of passing uh, and camouflage them f so so they, they my players will not say, okay, we only train passes. Mm -hmm. But I have very lot of focus on passes when we train everything. So they know that's important to me. Of course, we have some normal stuff like right foot, balance, good arm, ankle, and all that kind of stuff. That's, yeah, that's logic. Mm -hmm. But I'm very into training passes uh, against goal. Maybe train crosses and maybe train uh, press play. How do you call it? Yeah, yeah. Press play, yeah. yeah. We always play into between two players and put the ball away. Mm -hmm. That's important for me. And the, the key thing is to train passes with defense. I always have passes exercise with defense. Not not uh, totally hardcore defense who just uh, kill them because they know oh now he have to pass this way, but defense who make some pressure, maybe with the arms or maybe to the body, mm -hmm. and make some pressures on the passing. That's that's very a uh, key thing for me. Mm -hmm. So when we train passes, it's all always at the same time as we are uh, training uh, crosses. Uh, what do you call it? Kraus? Uh, no. Kraus. Yeah, so that's the same time where as we are playing, uh, as we are playing uh, devil, uh, as we are playing passes. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any idea where that comes from? Because I think when uh, people from all over the world looking to the Danish handball, they are really into it about the knowledge about their passing style because it's really fast. As you talk, all these key facts and all these things. Where did you learn it, or in which moment could you? Uh, remember that you realize I'd like to pass in this way. Is this from teaching? So maybe you, you make your uh, coaching license and you learn it there, or is it back into uh, back in the history when you are younger? It's that everyone does that way. Where does this come from? Is it a culture thing? Is this a personal thing? Yeah, it's, I think it's a culture thing. Mm -hmm. We are very into. Uh, How do we make good passes and how do we turn down uh, passing faults? Mm -hmm. We hate passing faults. So we try to make good balance and make uh, some good uh, technical education and some good timing uh, when to pass before two players are uh, yeah, uh, killing you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have to pass. And, and the whole thing about the press spill, yeah, mm -hmm. when you just uh, moving the ball until the defense is uh, in a bad balance and then you have a good situation. That's very much the philosophy in the typical Danish handball. Mm -hmm. So the press play is, uh, is very important. And maybe we in Denmark are a little too focused on the pass play because we are not so good in shooting. Mm -hmm. And maybe we take a little focus from shooting into passes. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. You also work for the Danish Handball Federation. Yeah. What is your job there? Um, my job is to be assistant coach on the national team, the under under 18 girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my first team was uh, was with under 18 girls, which were born in 98 and 99. Yeah, and now I have 2002 and 2003 girls where I'm an assistant coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is the work there? How is the difference between working here and working there? Mm, time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been a national assistant coach for five years now mm -hmm. for youth teams and we're often under pressure <laughs> uh, when we're talking time. We don't have so much training and we don't have so many days together. Mm -hmm. So we have to make some play or make some collective defense and attack so it uh, It, it would be, hmm, what do you call, 
it will give meaning to play uh, match, matches, national Efficiency. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So we often meet on Monday and we have to play Thursday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have to learn to play a little together and improve some some uh, plays and some defense skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, every, for every body on the team, it's a little higher level as at home. So it's good training for them. And then we often play hmm, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, that could be a typical week. Okay. How is... Um The selection to the U18 is it? Um, it comes. It starts maybe with the U16 or U17, so it goes back to that. Um, are there? Did you see any different about the selection? About the taking look on the talent from the Shea to the Danish Handball Federation, or are they the same? Mm, from Shea and from the federation. Mm -hmm. It's a little like the same because both have focused on um, choosing or picking out players which could be very great senior players. So it's a little kind of the same vision they have. In Shia we try to educate them through Shia every day and make them to uh, national league players. And maybe in, in DHF and the Federation we have a little higher goal. We try to make them to national players on the mm -hmm. A level. So in the federation, we have to look at the same as in Chia, uh, which of them could, could be good as senior players, but the selection are a little tougher, of course, mm -hmm. for a national team, because we have to, to go for players which can reach the highest level mm -hmm. international. And your field of talents is almost wider than here in Chia. Yeah, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. We have whole uh, the whole nation here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is What is one reason that you can keep your job at the Danish Handball Federation? Did you need the win in the next tournament or how are your results getting... Um, um, I missed the word. Messen. Yeah, um, yeah. How are they important? Yeah. Yeah. You can say they are not so important at the end. But mm. the main thing is that we have to do it well in the, in the championships because we have to uh, open up for the next championship. Mm -hmm. You have to do some well results in the championships for the next team under you and your own team can come again next year and mm -hmm. to participate in the next tournament and the next championship. So it's a little important to, to do it well, but it's not important if we win gold, silver or bronze, because the important thing is to do some national players for the A-level. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about the Danish handball and you got a great overview in the last tournaments what can you say are some potential fields or topics for the Danish handball in which fields would uh, the Danish handball federation make the next step in the women's side we're talking a lot of uh, the technical education in shooting For mm -hmm. example, the nine meter players shoot with more ankles mm -hmm. from the top to the ground, from this to the other side and like that. And from the boys team, we're talking about making some, not always only tall uh, pivots, but also some small, maybe a little fat mm -hmm. boys, which can get the ball and turn around uh, with a bounce pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the topics, and we're always talking, of course, left-handers. I think every nation are doing that. We have some interesting left-handers, especially on the boys' side right now, coming up. And we also have um, always some issues, especially on the women's side. We have some good goalies mm -hmm. on the next levels, which are coming up now. Uh, some of them are from Shia, actually. And we also have... Um, You can say Emil Nielsen, which are playing in Nantes, and maybe he is going to Spain. <laughs> so he, uh, he is also maybe the next good goalie. So we try also always to talk about goalies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always talked uh, uh, in the Federation, we're always talking about the development for players to the national team. That means if we, in 2002, let's say so, not are good in left wing, It's not a catastrophe because maybe in 2000 national team we have some good left wings. Mm -hmm. 
So we always have to look, okay, what do we got in this? What do we got in this, this? So when we put it all up, it will fit. It's not so important that every team has a fantastic pivot. Mm -hmm. No problem, because on the A level, we only have to use three or four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we try to look at it together, all the talent from the first national team to the last year at the national team as one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, last topic, Mikkel, a little bit personal. When did you start being a coach and what was your motivation for it? Mm. I start being a coach when I was about 15. 15, okay. Yeah. My motivation was that I it looks interesting. <laughs> it was for small boys and girls and they were they were under 11, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was not so good in playing myself. So that could be my way to stay in the handball and stay on the on in a good level. Mm -hmm. uh, so at first it was, of course, it was just for having some fun and try to be a coach. And after that, I get uh, very motivated uh, into this lifestyle. And so, of course, it took all my time and then it it, it became a lifestyle for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, how was your development with license? So when did you start to make your first uh, coaching license here in the Danish mm. Handball Federation? Uh, I start early. <laughs> Actually, I was starting at the same as okay. when I was 15. I was to the first lessons. Mm -hmm. I were and look, and I, maybe I did not understand so much. And I <laughs> actually I don't remember, but I took the one one by one mm -hmm. lesson, and after that I have the diploma courses, which are the highest Danish. And so I took the EHF master coach after that, and I took that when I was. 26 maybe 27 I don't remember yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that was very interesting so I really liked the coach education yeah okay could you describe your coaching style mm. I like to be a kind of democratic leader mm -hmm. I like to have a good relationship to the players to talk to them to be a little more than just a coach uh, in between a friend and a coach mm -hmm. yeah a coach who can be a friend sometimes and sometimes he can be an enemy <laughs> some will feel but I'm also I'm also a coach with a temperament so I can be very angry very fast mm -hmm. if something's turned wrong I'm not so into what to call it yelling mm -hmm. at the players yeah. the only thing who can make me totally crazy that's uh, people who don't want to give everything Mistakes, okay, and if you don't uh, score at your chances, yeah, okay, I can take another player in there. Mm -hmm. But players which are not uh, fighting and uh, not have power and not uh, giving everything for the team, I can't stand it. So they are, they are out and then yeah. they, they are, they'll not come in again. You don't try to hold them because maybe for the reason you will win th with them? So you let them let them go. No, normally my team is very much a team. You know, mm -hmm. we are a typical uh, a collective. strong collective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody are going in the same direction. If we have someone which are not doing like that, I can't stand it, and then they have to. As a, they cannot be there. Yeah. So so we also players which are good, but don't really want to train and don't really want to fight for mm -hmm. ball the ball uh, on the court and don't really want to fight for the teammates yeah that's not my thing mm -hmm. and our playing philosophy is just playing uh, totally open attack no s uh, not that uh, kind of systems which are closed with uh, you do this and you do this and then you shoot no no we do this and we do this and when you have to look okay are he uh, free there or could i pass in the other side and then he could so we have many options in everything mm -hmm. and we only play with 2002 boys which Moll and I coaches for many years we only play three maybe four different mm -hmm. openings the rest of it was just how does the court look now uh, he is moving up there then the line player goes out there yes yeah, so we play very open mm -hmm. and that, that's uh, that's also a little tough way to play for the players because they have to think a lot mm -hmm. But okay. they know we have some simple rules 
for example. If he do this and he do this, you you have to do in there. You have to go in there. So we have some rules, but they are need to see what are the defense do, and then we know. Okay, now we cross. If he do this, now we cross. If he if they switch like this, then we do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course we have some some way that we would like to play, but in the end we are very open. It's an it's an open game philosophy. With, which builds a lot of trust for the players because you give them yeah, you every decision. Yeah, but you need to have one or two players in the field who are leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I try to educate leaders also. In 2002, we have a leader. And in 2004, boys, my new team, mm -hmm. we are trying to make a leader which can decide the things in the end. Of course, I'm also a coach who wants to win the close games. So maybe I give them a good advice in the last two minutes, but I, I'm not a coach who is telling them everything in all mm. the match. That's totally, uh, yeah, so we never make good leaders out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's come to the last two questions. One is, would you say that you're a typical Danish coach or could you describe a typical Danish coach? Yeah, I think in, in some ways, a typical Danish coach are good in uh, technical development, individual training with a lot of jumping and rolling and dribble. Yeah, and uh, a typical Danish coach are maybe not so much into winning mm -hmm. as I am. I, I really want to build up some collective and give the players, um, each player have each role. He knows that that's my thing and that's my thing and that's my thing to do here yeah. so we can stand and yeah win the matches yeah we'll try to that but we also have um, a, a country with many good coaches here in Denmark and everybody is trying to do pretty much the same as me with technical development for passes and shooting and uh, fakes yeah mm -hmm. so uh, so yeah maybe a little bit typical okay and one last question uh, personal nature Could you imagine to go abroad, and which country would like to, in which country would you like to work as a coach? Actually, I don't think that I would go away from Denmark. I like to, I like to be here. I like the culture, handball culture. I like the philosophy. But of course, it could be interesting to work with youth players in another country. Mm -hmm. Uh, Germany is a handball country, of course it could be Germany or France. The language is a little kind of the problem, both places, because my kind of uh, my kind of uh, being a trainer is very into the relationship with the players and that could be tough for me to get a good relationship to a France player mm -hmm. when we did not understand each other. Mm -hmm. So of course I could like to try maybe one year or something in another country, but But right now I don't have any plans. I like to stay in Denmark and yeah, it's, it's, it fits me perfect. Mikkel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for all the insights. Um, I think a lot of coaches are really jealous about your job here in Shea because you have a, okay. <laughs> because you have a, you have a great culture as you told us and great players and a great infrastructure. Could you give players all over the uh, coaches all over the world some advice or some typical advice you maybe give uh, young coaches at the end uh, i don't know maybe if it should be then the danish culture says that you don't have to be so afraid uh, making the players like you mm -hmm. we'd, we're not so afraid to if we are out seeing an opponent in uh, one or two hours from skanderborg We're going out to dinner with them and talk in uh, other ways, other things in life to them and try to teach them how, how the world is outside this whole handball hall and outside this little sheer world. We have to stay near to them and that's the, yeah, I think that's a good Danish way. Mikkel, tusen tak. Thank you very much. Selv tak. <laughs> Bye. Bye.